Whereas his imperial highness, Nasiruddin, Maharaja of Adora being dead, and whereas his throne being temporarily occupied by his brother's wife, and whereas there being no male descendant to either side of the royal house, therefore be it hereby resolved, first, that the wise men and sages of Adorab go throughout the length and breadth of our fair land and search for a suitable candidate for the throne. Second, said candidate to be of tender enough years to be capable of being molded and trained as befits the prince of royal station. Third, that the qualifications of candidates must include proof of some divine indication to recommend him for the great office of Imperial Highness Maharaja of Adora. Salam. Come, my son. Let us go and search. I am with you, Bapuji. Today's radio play, The Promised Bride, is based on a most interesting story taken from the pages of next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Here's my favorite mango tree, for Maddie. Let us rest a while. Look, the sun is high in the heavens. Even the cattle seek this shade. Oh, I think you're a wonderful mama to be in charge of all these animals. Do you? Yes. I'm glad you think so. Why? Because of all the girls in the village, I like you best. You do, Mama? Yes, but Marty. And do you know what I think about as I tend my cattle? Tell me. I think about when we shall be grown up and own our own herd of cattle. Oh, Mama, you really? I do. Would you like to marry me, Pugmati? Yes. Oh, yes. But that cannot be for a long time. I think you can pay my father for me. I shall work hard and save enough as fast as I can. I thought of nothing but that, Pugmati. All last night I lay awake thinking of that time. I'm glad. I've been thinking about it, too. Oh, Mom, if only you had enough money now. I haven't. I wish you won't bring it to me. But, Marty. Yes, Mama. Will you wait for me until I can marry you? Yes, Mama. Promise? I promise. No matter what happens? No matter what happens. And I. Wait. Here, put Marty. Take this bell. It will be a token of our promise. Keep this always to remind you that one day we shall marry. I shall always remember, Mama. So shall I. Oh, look. Two babies are coming this way. Let us go to sleep, put Marty. And then they won't bother us. Anyway, I'm drowsy. I... I am too. Here is a shady spot under this mango tree, my son. Let us rest by these children. Papuji! Look! Over the boy's head! A king cobra! It stood between him and the sun throws a shadow over his face. The cobra is acting as a shade for the sleeping boy. It is a Norman. My son, our search is ending. This is the boy we seek. Are you certain, Babuji? He whom the cobra guards is destined to be a king. See how the snake silently fans the air with its hooded head. Its bright eyes watching. Watching. But what if the cobra bites the boy? Then the sign will have been wrong, and he will not be the chosen one. Rouse the girl and ask. Who the boy is? At once, Papuji. Awake, little one. Awake. Is it time to go, Mama? Quiet, my child. Mama, where's my? Oh, a snake! Kill it! Oh, don't let it hurt! Oh, don't let it hurt, Mama! Quiet, my child. We oh. must not try to drive the cobra away. Oh, kill it! We must rouse the boy. We might make a move. But... Then the snake would surely think it fans into your little friend. Oh, Mama, don't move. Don't move, Mama. Come, it is to his mother, my child. We would have words with her. But, Mama... If he is to be bitten by the snake, he will be bitten. Come, my child.
But where is he? I must go to him. Listen to me, my daughter. I must have your answer. A cobra sits with its head waiting over my son's face and you stand here asking me questions? Where is my mama? He whom the cobra guards is well protected, my daughter. The king cobra guards the future king. Stop talking about future kings and destiny. Tell me where I may find my boy. And what would you do if I took you to the place where he is sleeping? I would drive away the snake. And kill your son. Oh. My daughter, if the gods are pleased to mark the boy for so great an office as king of Adorab, he will keep him safe from harm. Words, words. Bapuji, what do you gain by this delay? Take me to my son. If the will of the gods is to be carried out, my daughter, your son will come to you. Oh. The cattle are returning. Mamma, you. Oh, Mamma, where's the money? Oh, Mamma, Mamma, my son, my son. You're safe. Of course I am, Mother. Why do you say that? Oh, who is this man? He is from the palace, Mamma. He says you are chosen by the gods to rule Adorab. But I do not wish to rule Adorab. It is for the gods, not us, to choose what we shall do, my son. Prepare to accompany me to the palace. You must do as Baputi says. Oh, you're safe. Now, but Marty says I'm safe. Why? Why, you were asleep under the mango tree. A big cobra raised its head over you and made a sunshade. I wanted to drive it away, but this man wouldn't let me. So that is why you say I'm the chosen one. I've been chosen by the snake. Yes, my son. Chosen? For what? He says I'm to become the Maharaja. Oh, Mom, there is surely some mistake with Marty. I'm no prince. Do I go here with him? Mother says I must go. We shall never see you again. We must submit to the will of the gods, Pudmati. You and I. But do not grieve, Pudmati. I shall soon be back when they find out their mistake. No, you won't. I shall never see you again. Come, my son. We have far to go, and we must start. Goodbye, mother. Goodbye, my son. Goodbye, Pudmati. Remember our promise. I shall always remember. And you? I swear by the love of Rama and Sita, I shall return to keep our promise. The omen of the King Cobra comes true. The days pass into years, and finally Mama descends the throne. The coronation ceremony is hardly over when he summons the wise men to his side. Your Highness summoned me? Yes, Papuji. For years you have kept me here in the palace of prison. I could do nothing except as you and the other wise men direct. It's not proper and fitting for the heir to the throne. True, Your Highness. It is necessary to guide your feet in the path that they should go. You took me away from my sweetheart, with Mark, whom I wanted to marry. Marriage is of the spirit, and not of the place. Your throne shall be your bride. Papuji, have I not obeyed your every suggestion? You have, Heidi. Have I not applied myself diligently that I might make a good Maharaja and so uphold the traditions and duties of that office? You have, Heidi. Is it not fitting and proper for the ruler of Adorab? to give his country a natural heir to the throne. It is, Amy. Then since I had your approval, I'm going to take a bride. You, your wish is the command, Amy. We shall search at once for a suitable consort for you. There is no need, Bapuji. I have made a choice for myself. You have, Highness? Yes. Ah, oh, your Highness is indeed a man of discernment. Whom have you chosen for the honored face? What is the name of the princess who has caught your eye? Bapu. On the day you came upon me under the mango tree, I plighted my childhood cross with Kutmati. In token of that, I unfastened a bell from the neck of one of my cows. And I swore I'd redeem it when I took it to the priest for the wedding time. A childish fantasy. But now you are a man, a Maharaja, and of course you will put away such thoughts. I have never put away the thought that one day Kutmati and I should wait. Heinous. Awake or asleep, my thoughts have been of her. To her and to her alone, I have been faithful. Bapu, I'm going on a journey. You forget this village maiden, eh? No, Bapu. To claim her for my bride. Thank you.
but nothing. It is nearing the hour. I know, Mother and Mama. What are you going to do? I cannot decide. Mama is still in your thoughts. You know he is, huh? He is still in my thoughts, too. My daughter that was to be. But Mama, the Mama we both once knew, is lost to us forever. Do you truly think so? Have not these old eyes looked in vain for years to see him once more? Oh, Mother of Mama. I've been faithful to him ever since he left us. I've hoped against hope that he would return and make his bride. But now he is Maharaja. They will choose a bride for him as they have ruled his life since they took him away. You are beautiful, but not it. Do not waste your beauty. Akbar Khan wants you. He has wooed you most insistently. I know. Akbar Khan is wealthy. He will give you anything your heart desires. I desire only Mahmud. Um, Put away all thought of Mahmud. Akbar Khan will soon be here for his answer. Very well. Bring me my richest robe. Yes. Yes. Here it is. All shimmering with jewels. See. See what a rich tutor can give the woman of his choice. Let me wrap it around you, too. Now, you are ready. You are the cool. Here is your newest perfume, Atter of Roses. Now, come. Come, my daughter that was to be. Recline on this couch and await your future husband. Bring me two things. The silver bell Mama gave me. Uh, and, and that little jewel case yonder. Yes. And now... A glass of wine, the rest of Yes. Now, I'm prepared for his arrival. I have never seen you look more beautiful, but not it. Dr. Khan, but not it. What are you doing? What is that powder from the jewel case? Poison. Stop! But not it! But not it! Now, I am ready. Marty! Oh! Marty! Marty, my son! My son! I have come to claim good Marty as my bride. Where is she? Sure to read the interesting story of how a poor little ragamuffin was chosen to be a king in his own country and what happened when he ascended the throne. It will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. This is Wentworth announcing and turning the microphone over to your own announcer. Hi, baby. Watch me. How's that? Send in your many knocking pins, John. A nice guy, you. Why are you taking me to a show or something if you got so much jack to throw away? Oh, listen, Major. A fella can't go to shows all the time. He's got to have some recreational exercise. Some what? Recreational exercise. That's what the charity worker told me. He said I look kind of peaked and I ought to have some exercise to build up my body. Hmm, I suppose you could see there wasn't any hope for your mind. Yes, yes. 
Say, what do you think I am, a feeblo? Listen, I don't want to beat, but your baby would like to have bracelets. How can I get him? Sure, that's Jake with me. Oh, only leave me finish this frame I got coming up, will you? Well, I'm get him a bracelet. Listen, baby, I got a nice little box all promoted. All I got to do is punch it, and you'll have everything your main pump wants. You got to crack a safe? Yeah. Tonight. And tomorrow? Ah, you wait and see, baby. Today's radio play, Thief of Police, is based on a most interesting story taken from the pages of next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. There he is, Chief. A visitor for you, Blackie. Good morning, Blackie. What's good about it? Oh, feeling a little low, eh, Blackie? Yeah. Well, I can't say to blame you. Facing lying in state for a while doesn't make things any brighter. Well, it's a good thing I didn't come up in front of a hard rapper. He made have given me a ten spot. Yeah, ten years in the stir scares you, doesn't it? Yeah, a little. Hey, tell me, Blackie. How did a smart G like you come to grief? What's it to you? Well, I've got a theory, and I want to see if it's solid. What tripped you up? Well, just one little thing. Yeah? One little item, and I'd have had scored another job. I'd have been given a place to rumble for a long time. Every day I go to the little cigar store across the street. I buy some cigarettes or a paper or a magazine. Just to have an out for hanging around. Yeah, go on. Well, the place is a sort of a hangout for mechanics. So I always wore greasy jumpers and smeared oil on my face and hands. I'd stand around smoking like it was my lunch hour. And then I'd leave. Or else I'd pretend to be on the night shift and come around the supper hour. Well, I said you were a smart G. You won't think so when I tell you what tripped me up. Well, go ahead, I'm listening. Then came the night I was going to put the Mac on the crib. I get into the place, and I find the crib, look for the combo, but couldn't...